Chapter 50 If there's a first time, then there's also a second time you are listening at novelfull.audio. Ji Yunhuang lightly touched the birthmark on her shoulder, and a faint light flashed behind his eyes. She was not an imposter, she was the real Ning Shuomo. Twelve years ago, he had seen her as an infant and noticed the birthmark. He even touched it out of curiosity. Not anything else could be faked but not this. Apart from her parents, he should be the only one who knows about her birthmark. Perhaps this little girl herself did not even know about its existence. He cut the pill in half before using water to dissolve it. He dipped his fingertips in the mixture and started to apply it on her wound. Ning Shuema felt as if electrical currents flowed from his fingertips, the pain disappeared everywhere he touched, leaving behind a slight warm feeling. Shortly after, a cool sensation seeped in before a slight prickling itch took over. Ning Shuema had been injured often in her previous world, so she could tell that this feeling meant that her injuries were healing. The only difference was that her wounds were healing at a much faster rate than in her previous world. It seems like the crown prince's unique healing art was very effective. Soon the medicine was completely applied to her back. Seeing that he was planning to stop there, Ning Shuema moved her injured arm towards him. Please treat my shoulder and arm too. Ji Yunhuang was chuckling behind her. Weren't you reluctant to have me attend to your wounds just earlier? Your highness has already said that if there's a first time, there's also a second time. Since your highness has already applied the medicine on my back, then you might as well do so for the other injured areas too. A good deed must be carried through. When sending Buddha, send him all the way to the west. As Ning Shuama's pain eased, her voice also became more melodious. You really know how to get what you want. Ji Yunhuang's voice held a hint of laughter that wasn't quite laughter. Seeming as if he was sighing while probing her out, he asked, if you were always this smart, how did you let people bully you? Now it's like you're a completely different person. Could he be suspecting her identity? Has your highness heard of the idiom place someone on a field of death, and he will fight to live? I am someone who has died once. Naturally, I would wish for a fresh start. My behavior changing is to be expected. A change in behavior is indeed possible. But you suddenly show much more ability now, so much so that it makes people surprised and confused. Huh, maybe it is the heavens that have seen the countless grievances I suffered and decided to compensate me by giving me many abilities. That way, I could have a reversal of fortune for the first time. Ji Yunhuang was utterly speechless. Ning Shuema answered every question flawlessly, such that even Ji Yunhuang could not find a loophole. Helplessly sighing, he stopped questioning her and put his full attention on the injuries on her arm and shoulder. Ning Shuema observed his actions attentively. She saw that while he was smearing the medicine on her wounds, his fingertips emitted a green glow. Wherever it touched, a cooling feeling seeped into her skin. Could it be that this is a rejuvenating spell, which in order for one to learn, requires the cultivation of wood. Element psychokinesis. She had seen it before in games, but now she had seen the real thing. Psychokinesis, what a magical thing. Was there really not the slightest trace of it in her body? For the first time ever since she transmigrated, Ning Shuema started getting interested in psychokinesis. Very quickly, he finished the application of the medicine and helped her dress her wounds. Before heading off to wash his hands, he also went over the things she would need to be careful of during these few days. Ning Shuema watched his tall figure disappearing, and she suddenly felt touched. The reason why this crown prince had been pretty good to her does not matter. Furthermore, he possessed a heavenly talent in psychokinesis, so he ought to have some books on cultivating psychokinesis. She thought for a bit and then opened her mouth to make a frank request. Ji Yunhuang was quite surprised. Don't you have a crippled physique that can't cultivate psychokinesis? Even if you read those books, they would be useless. Chapter 51 Are you inviting me to sleep with you? You are listening at novelfull.audio. He turned around to look at Ning Shuema, 
and seeing her crystal clear eyes shining with spirit under the candlelight, he seemed to have suddenly thought of something. Shiwama, do you want to test your compatibility to practice psychokinesis once again? Perhaps after this drastic change you experienced, heaven not only gave you ability but maybe also changed your crippled physique. Ning Shuama's eyes shone, okay. She had felt dissatisfied with this crippled physique since long ago. What if the test results had been inaccurate when she was younger? That's fine. I will bring you to test your compatibility tomorrow. For now, just rest here. Ning Shuama lifted her head to look out the window and saw that the sky was red, indicating that evening had arrived. Being somewhat impatient, she threw off the quilt before sitting up. It's better if we go now. Ji Yunhuang sighed, you're being a bit too anxious. You haven't fully recovered from your injuries yet, so your body is still weak. Even if you go test it now, it won't be accurate. It's better to restore your strength by resting for the night before going. Ning Shuema swept her gaze over the bedchamber and noticed that in such a spacious room, there stood only one bed. She probed him with a question, Your Highness, where are you going to sleep tonight? Ji Yunhuang looked at her with a smile that was not really a smile. Are you inviting me to sleep with you? Dot, inviting your big head. Your Highness really knows how to joke. What a pity that this joke is not that funny. You must have another bedchamber somewhere else filled with beauties who look like spring flowers and the autumn moon. They would love to invite you to share a bed with them. I'll have to trouble your highness to shut the door on the way out. Ning Shuema laid on her side and shut her eyes. Today she had truly expended too much energy and was rather tired. I don't have any beauties or another bedchamber. Ji Yunhuang slowly spoke. Ning Shuema's eyes shot open in surprise. This crown prince looked to be around 21 or 22 years old, and according to the customs of this place, even if he did not have a main wife, he should still have several secondary wives by his side, or at the very least a few roomfuls of concubines. How could he still be single? Could he be homosexual? She could not resist sizing him up from head to toe. His appearance looked handsome and gentle. However, his temperament was unfeeling, and his aura seemed quite imposing. Could it be that he was what they called outwardly kind but inwardly evil? In this era, what kind of attitude does society show to those who indulge themselves in that kind of love? Did they regard them as scourges? Or did they adopt an attitude of, just let it be? She tried to search from this body's memories but could not find any information on this topic. Ji Yunhuang was irritated by the way she was looking at him, little brat, why are you looking at me like that? Ning Shuema probed him with another question, what views does your highness have on catamites? Catamites. What are those? Ji Yunhuang expressed his confusion. Ning Shuema explained, catamites are. Courtier's children raised to be pretty and delicate as companions. Dot. Seeing that Ji Yunhuang was still looking a bit lost and not understanding what she was saying, she simply elaborated, and those companions are males that are meant to warm the beds of their masters. Ji Yunhuang's expression displayed disgust. Males can be used to warm beds too. Why is there such nonsense in that little head of yours? Could it be that you were struck silly by the soul-breaking whip? He reached out his hand to feel her forehead, you don't have a fever. Ning Shuema stayed silent. It was no wonder that her memories did not have anything regarding homosexuality. Apparently, this continent did not have any concept of it. It seems like the crown prince had no interest in men. Wow, in addition, it seems like he was someone who practiced abstinence. In this chaotic and wild era, men who practiced abstinence were even rarer than pandas. Ning Shuama's gaze towards him was filled with admiration, and she lauded him, it seems that I have misunderstood your highness. Please forgive me. Chapter 52 Ah! Xiao Longnu. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. It's fine. Ji Yunhuang replied without much thought. It was only after he replied that he started to wonder, 
what exactly had she misunderstood about him? Then tonight your highness is going to be sleeping in the guest quarters. Your benevolence is unparalleled. Xuemo really doesn't know how to repay you, Ning Xuemo had not finished praising him when she saw a large rope shoot out from his sleeve. She was flabbergasted as she watched him tie both ends of the rope to two pillars. What does your highness plan to do? Ji Yunhuang jumped on the rope and laid himself on it like he was lying down on a bed. The rope swayed slightly, and his clothes fluttered along with the movement. Seeming loftily high above the world, he stated, Tonight, I will sleep here. Xiao Long knew. No, Xiao Long Nan, heavens, could he be the successor of the ancient tomb sect? He was a disciple of of this world's number one sect. Could it be that the greatest sect under heaven is actually a branch of the ancient tomb sect? Your Highness, is this how you and everyone else in the Sun Moon Holy Cult sleep? Ji Yunhuang slightly turned his body on the rope bed. What nonsense are you speaking about? What Sun Moon Holy Cult? It's the Sun Moon sect. Ning Xuemo rubbed her nose. Oops. She had automatically mistaken the Sun Moon sect for Dongfang Bubi's Sun Moon Holy Cult. Anyways, they are both mysterious and I dot catching. Didn't that mean that their intrinsic nature would be roughly the same? Still, she did not know if the patriarch of the Sun Moon sect, the ancestor, was as overwhelming as Dongfang Bubi. In that instant, Ning Xuemo's thoughts had wandered everywhere. Only when she heard Ji Yunhuang continue did she snap out of it. This resting method can only be practiced by the inner disciples of Sun Moon sect. Furthermore, this skill is rather profound, the more you practice it, the thinner the rope you can use. Take my teacher for example, he can sleep on a rope which has the width of a pinky finger, Ning Xuemo looked at the soft rope that was half a fist thick and blurted out, isn't your teacher the ancestor's disciple? If he sleeps on a rope as thick as a pinky, then wouldn't your grandmaster be sleeping on a thread? Black lines appeared on Ji Yunhuang's forehead. This inference was really bold. He lightly smiled, no one has ever seen how the ancestor rests. Ning Xuemo was curious. Surely not. Could it be that even his disciples, those boys and maids serving him haven't seen him rest? Ji Yunhuang's eyelids drooped. Yes, no one. To tell you the truth, where the ancestor rests at night has always been a mystery. Ning Xuemo was silent. As expected, that man is a mystery. Could it be like what people say, a crafty rabbit has three burrows? This ancestor seems to be paranoid to the point of not trusting anyone, or maybe this is a deliberate pretense, your highness, is the ancestor's appearance that of an elderly man with white hair and a rosy complexion. Does he possess strength and vigor that stands out from the masses? It was a pity that she didn't get to see even a corner of his clothes last time, which made her felt distraught as she missed the opportunity to know such a famous character in this world. Hence, as an alternative, she could only ask someone who was close to the ancestor. Ji Yunhuang sighed, Xuemo, has no one told you that you can't just casually discuss matters involving the ancestor? Ning Xuemo once again rubbed her nose, her appearance indicating that she had expected this sort of answer. She gave a smile. There's only the two of us in this room. Talking a bit about it surely isn't a problem right? Furthermore, you are his grand disciple and should have seen him a few times. Just tell me a little bit about him. Her large eyes shone, and her appearance looked extremely lovable. Ji Yunhuang's heart jumped slightly. Finally relenting, he said, I was in the Sun Moon sect for so long, but I only managed to see him twice. The ancestor always wears a mask, so no one knows what his face looks like. But his straight black hair looked like a curtain. But it's not comparable to his vigor and strength, which is not something a mere mortal can contend with. 1. Xiao Longnu is the female lead of, The Second Book of the, which is a wuxia classic written by Jin Yong, Louis Cha. The reason why Ning Xuemo thought about Xiao Longnu is because of Ji Yunhuang used a rope to sleep. In the novel and numerous TV series adaptations, the first time Yang Guo, 
the main character of the second book, slept in Xiao Longnu's bedchamber at the ancient tomb sect, he slept on the bed while she slept on a rope. More details on Xiao Longnu. 2. This is a pun made with Xiao Longnu's name. That Nu in Chinese means female. So, Xiao Longnu means little dragon maiden. Since Ji Yunhuang is male, Nan is used. Thus, it could literally be translated as Little Dragon Man. 3. This is the continuation of the Xiao Long Nan joke. The ancient tomb sect is where Xiao Long Nu grew up since she was found as a baby. As the genius of the sect, she was selected as the next sect leader at the age of 14 years old. 4. The Sun Moon Holy Cult is a demonic cult from another novel and wuxia classic written by Jin Yong. This is just Ning Shuama mixing up the name of the Sun Moon sect and the Sun Moon Holy Cult. 5. Dong Fang Bubi is the leader of the Sun Moon Holy Cult in the Smiling, Proud Wanderer. He was the one who kicked Ren Wishing, the previous leader of the cult, from his position through scheming. Dong Fang Bubi is also a very powerful martial artist who castrated himself in order to master the Sunflower Manual which turned him into a formidable being. If you want to know more about this fictional character. 6. It's an idiom which means that a smart person always has a backup plan, or two. Chapter 53. Gossiping about the ancestor, 1. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Speaking up till this point, Ji Yunhuang stopped talking, refusing to speak even half a sentence more. It was clear that he genuinely respected and worshipped his grandmaster. Ning Shuema smiled and did not continue speaking, but in her heart she secretly complained. This ancestor must not be young anymore, probably an old fox from the Jianghu, one, who knows how to act mysterious. It seems like his skills might not necessarily be powerful. Otherwise, he wouldn't need to hide his face and only keep his hair black. That face under the mask must be full of wrinkles as numerous as flies. Ha ha ha. Shuama, what are you thinking about? Ji Yunhuang questioned as he saw her face becoming somewhat unnatural. Ah, nothing. Ning Shuama naturally would not tell him about her inner thoughts. She got off the bed. My injuries are almost healed. I should go back home since I don't want to disturb your highness any longer. I'm taking my leave, goodbye. She cupped her hands towards Ji Yunhuang before turning around and leaving. If she spent the night in the same room as the crown prince, even if they did not do anything, the stain on her reputation would not disappear even if she jumped in the Yellow River, too, according to the customs of this era, if they spent the night together, she would have to marry this crown prince and become a wife or a concubine. Although she did not seriously care about the customs of this era, she still did not want any additional trouble. Her actions caused the lash wounds on her body ache, reopening them again. Her forehead beaded with sweat from the pain. Naturally, Ji Yunhuang knew the reason behind her apprehension. His eyes darkened a bit. This girl was not the least bit interested in becoming his woman. Did she know what she was giving up by leaving? He flipped his body back to the ground and lifted his hand which emitted a faint white light, causing Ming Xuema's body to go numb. Her body was safely placed back on the bed, you still can't move yet. You'd have to recuperate for a night first. Tonight, I'll sleep somewhere else so as not to tarnish your reputation. Tomorrow I'll return to fetch you. With a wave of his sleeve, he collected his rope before leaving the room. A short while later, the voices of two maids standing outside could be heard from the bedroom. His Highness has ordered us to attend to Miss Ning as you rest. If Miss Ning has any needs, please give us the order. Ning Xuema's acupuncture points had been hit, therefore, she could not move. Fortunately, she could still speak, and she casually asked, what about His Highness, the Crown Prince? His Highness has left the residence and should be back tomorrow at dawn. This Crown Prince would rather sleep outside of his own residence than in one of his guest rooms. What a weirdo! What Ning Xuema did not know was that this crown prince had a bad habit of being picky of where he slept. It always had to be in the same place or else he would not be able to sleep. 
The Fifth Prince's Residence The Fifth Prince, Ji Yun Xiao was a person who had a regular schedule, whether it was for work or rest. Every day, he would go to bed at the high hour, free, but tonight, he was unable to sleep as usual. His third brother, the Crown Prince, had come over for a surprise visit and had insisted on playing a few rounds of chess, disturbing his sleep routine. Amongst the many princes, Ji Yinxiao's skill at chess was on par with the crown princes. Hence, they had developed the habit of playing at a customized pavilion that was constructed into an octagonal shape, meant to be used for playing chess. They often played there until both were greatly satisfied. Although Ji Yinxiao seemed like a rather idle prince, he had numerous eyes and ears throughout the country, allowing him to receive news rather quickly. Tonight, Ji Yunhuang appeared quite distracted, often making wrong moves unlike his usual self. Ji Yunxiao teased him, third brother, today little brother received a fresh piece of news. I heard that you gave old sixth quite a blow at the tea house, even bringing his fiancée back to your house. Did you really do such a thing? One, literally means rivers and lakes. Refers to the world of wandering people. Warriors, musicians, traveling merchants etc. Two, the yellow river refers to the river that all souls have to cross when they die. Hence she is saying that even if she dies, the stain on her reputation would still be there. Three, around 9 p.m. point 11 p.m. When it says hour here, it means the Chinese hour of a double hour. Chapter 54 Gossiping about the ancestor, too, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Ji Yunhuang's facial expression did not change as he lightly replied, who is old sixth's fiancé? They already annulled their engagement. Pa! The chess piece that Ji Yunxiao had been holding onto landed on the chessboard. It couldn't be, right? Are you actually attracted to that little girl who is a piece of trash that Old Sixth wants to avoid at all cost? Trash. Perhaps she simply does not have the innate talent to cultivate psychokinesis. Ji Yunhuang said as he placed down a chess piece. Tisk, TSK, seeing you speaking up for her like this, it seems as if that heart of stone of yours is finally experiencing ripples. However, third brother, let this little brother offer you a sincere piece of advice. That girl was once betrothed to old sixth. Even if they already broke off their engagement, if you pursue her, it will be easy to get her. But, there might be some nasty rumors that are going to spread. Besides, there are so many beauties under the heavens, and many of them are ready to throw themselves at you if you will it, so why do you want to get entangled with that girl? Even if you simply took her as a concubine and not a wife, our imperial father would likely disagree as he has to consider the reputation of the imperial family. A pa resounded as Ji Yunhuang's chess piece slammed down, nearly cracking the chessboard. Old fifth, when did I say I was going to marry her or take her as a concubine? You're thinking too much. Come, come, it's hard for us brothers to meet up. If I don't accompany you to play chess tonight, then I'm not fit to be called your third brother. The placement of the chess pieces sped up. The corner of Ji Yunxiao's mouth twitched. Just who is accompanying whom? He has never stayed awake until this late in the night. I'm trapped. Ning Xuema was jolted awake due to a loud racket outside. She opened her eyes wide and noticed that outside the window, there was a faint hint of firelight. Sounds of disorderly and panicked footsteps were transmitted to her ears. Lord Lu, no one is allowed to enter the Crown Prince's sleeping quarters. Now that the Crown Prince is not here at the moment, without his permission, your people aren't allowed to enter. The words Ning Shuema heard came from the Crown Prince's butler. I am handling a case on imperial orders. Since the criminal is hiding in the Crown Prince's sleeping quarters, how do I arrest this criminal if I don't enter? Lord Lu's voice sounded imposing as he said those lines. I am unable to comply. Under no circumstances is anyone allowed to trespass into the Crown Prince's sleeping quarters without his permission. If His Highness, the Crown Prince, decides to blame someone, neither you nor I will be able to escape punishment. 
Lord Lu, why don't we discuss this when the crown prince returns? That butler did not give way in the slightest. There's a criminal in the crown prince's bedchamber. Is the person that Lord Lu's trying to arrest, her? Why? Did she infringe any laws? But she also knew that once she get tangled with the imperial family, who knew how many countless machinations and schemes would be planned in the dark implicating her. They came to arrest her with great fanfare. She would certainly handle them without question. She was only a helpless little girl with no one to rely on. If some big shot wanted to kill her, all he would have to do is place the blame for some issue on her. She could not just sit there and wait for death. If she was caught by them and tossed into a prison, her little life would be more or less over. Ning Xuema intended to leap up from the bed, but the moment she moved slightly, her body grew numb. Her limbs did not feel like they belonged to her, and they did not move even a little bit. Damn it! Ji Yunhuang had closed her acupoints in order to allow her to recover faster. Even now, they still had not reopened. She simply couldn't move at all. She pricked her ears to listen for a moment. Outside, Lord Lu and the butler were still arguing, but he had not insisted on sending his men to force his way in. It seems as if this Lord Lu still held some reluctance towards offending the crown prince. She lightly let out a sigh of relief. If it went on like this, the matter would only be resolved if the crown prince came over. In that case, she would be safe. But where did Ji Yunhuang go? If he was here, even if that Lord Lu had the imperial decree, he would not allow people to take her away easily. Chapter 55 Forbidden Love, 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. She shut her eyes and used the internal force that she had recently acquired through cultivation to attack her sealed acupuncture points. Relying on yourself is better than relying on other people. She had to rescue herself. First, she had to regain her ability to move. After all, her body's foundation proves to be too weak. The internal force that she had gathered was extremely limited in both quantity and quality. Furthermore, Ji Yunhuang had used a special method to seal her acupoints, hence, she would not be able to open them for a while. While she was focused on maneuvering her internal force to open her acupoints, she suddenly heard the melodious voice of a young lady drift over. Why are you making such a ruckus at my older brother's place? Lord Lu answered, Greetings to Her Highness, the Princess. Grand Marshal whose daughter died suddenly after returning to her residence today, and Ning Xuema is the prime suspect. This one carries the imperial decree to arrest her, but the butler won't allow me in. Although they were separated by half a courtyard, Ning Xuema who had already focused her attention on anything Lord Lu said had heard his words very clearly. The shocking news blared inside her mind. Hu Dai Chang died. How can it be? At that time, the acupoints she had hit should have only affected the fetus and Hu Jichang's fertility in the future. How could she die all of a sudden? The butler once again repeated his words, but this time, she heard the princess coldly chuckling. Even if other people can't enter my older brothers, the crown princes, sleeping quarters, I can. The imperial decree cannot be disobeyed, I shall help you resolve this matter this time. Her voice had only just died down when the door to the sleeping quarters was suddenly forced open. Ning Xuema blinked and saw a fine dot looking young lady already standing before the bed. She looked to be around 17.18 years of age and had a pair of phoenix eyes. Her cherry blossom colored glossy lips were lightly pursed, and her long pitch black hair was bound up into a bun with a jade hairpin accessory inserted in it. The white jade hairpin bore the shape of a white peony. She wore a moon white muslin gown and looked like a fairy. However, unlike her appearance, her aura felt powerful and immensely threatening. She looked down on Ning Xuema from above and sized her up from head to toe. In the depths of her eyes, a sinister light quickly flitted by. So you're Ning Xuemo. So young, yet as charming as a little vixen. 
I don't know what kind of underhanded means you used on my older brother to unexpectedly allow you to stay in his bedroom and sully his reputation. This princess seemed very hostile towards her. Her gaze felt like she was looking at a love rival instead. Ning Xuema's eyes narrowed slightly as she quickly went through all the information in her memories about this princess. This princess was called Ji Yunyao, but she had not grown up in the imperial palace. It was said that when the old emperor went out, he met a common woman by chance. They had a dalliance, resulting in that the woman getting pregnant. When the old emperor returned to the palace, that woman already became ten months pregnant and gave birth to a princess. It was only when the princess turned fifteen that her mother, who laid on her deathbed, told her the truth about her birth origins. Hence, she left for the capital alone to meet her relatives and acknowledge her ancestry. This type of dramatic backstory was somewhat like Ziwei of My Fair Princess, just that she did not have as much of a hard time as Ziwei in looking for her relatives. On the contrary, it went rather smoothly for Ji Yunyao. She had not stayed in the capital for long before she was crowned as a rightful princess. The old emperor had fathered many sons but only one princess, hence she became extremely pampered and doted upon. Furthermore, this princess got along well with her older brothers. Of course, the one she was closest to was the crown prince. Apparently, the crown prince was rather doting towards this little sister of his. Whenever he returned to the capital, she would be like his shadow, staying close to him. The doors of the crown prince's residence remained open to her at all times. It seemed like the rumors were true. While other people might not be allowed to trespass into the crown prince's sleeping quarters, Ji Yunyao could casually enter it. Naturally, Ning Xuema could feel that the princess harbored an abnormally strong hostility towards her. Ning Xuema's eyes lowered slightly as the corner of her lips faintly lifted. It seems like the feelings of this princess towards her brother, the crown prince, were not entirely pure siblings' love. Incest. Ha! <laughs> what are you? a lowly commoner, laughing at. Your death is near at hand, yet you're still laughing. Ji Yunyao became enraged. One, is a historical TV series, also known as The Return of the Pearl Princess, which starred Vicky Zao as the main lead and Ruby Lin as Ziwei. It's about a tomboyish orphan girl, Zio Yangzi, who from various events became a princess without having a drop of royal blood in her. Ziwei is her friend and the illegitimate daughter of the emperor. Chapter 56 Forbidden Love, 2, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ning Xuema lifted her eyes. Princess has misunderstood me. My relationship with the crown prince is not what you think. We are just normal friends. The reason why he allowed me to stay here is to help me heal and because he values my medical skills. While I'm healing, I cannot move around randomly hence he left me here. Furthermore, to avoid any nasty rumors, the crown prince has also left the residence. By accusing me of having a vixen's charm and using underhanded means not only insults me but also insults your crown prince brother. Is he really that type of shallow person? A woman blinded by jealousy is impervious to reason. Ning Xuema was currently in the princess' hands and could not rebel at all. She did not want to be the target of the princess' ire and get burned to death by her jealousy. The first thing to do would be to clarify her relationship with Ji Yunhuang. If she could get rid of the hostility this princess felt towards her, it would save her a lot of headaches in the future. Indeed, when her words were spoken, it had lessened the hostility in Ji Yunyao's eyes. However, Ji Yunyao still had some suspicions. Medical skills. What kind of medical skills can trash like you possess? Ning Xuema kept smiling as she explained, this one does not dare to lie in front of princess. Recently, I have reattached the arm of a woman which had been torn off. If princess does not believe me, you can personally go to the Supreme Court to ask about it. That woman is still recuperating in there. The suspicion in Ji Yunyao's eyes deepened. You're lying. If you had done something like that, why have I never heard of this matter before? Ning Xuema suddenly understood. 
the truly skilled physicians on this continent were too few in number, hence every single one was fiercely fought for by the large factions. In order to hide the fact that she reattached her second aunt's arm, Ji Yunhuang had made preparations so that the news would not be leaked. No wonder she had not heard of anyone gossiping about this matter the last few days when she strolled around the streets. From the start, the information about her medical prowess was suppressed. If princess doesn't believe me, you can go and ask the crown prince. Then, you'll know that Xuema didn't lie. Ji Yunyao's phoenix eyes twitched. Though she still did not really believe it, the hostility in her eyes had faded away considerably. For this matter, I will definitely ask around to clarify it. However, you are still the prime suspect of Miss Hu's murder case. You still need to go to the Ministry of Justice to explain yourself, that she lifted her hand to open Ning Xuema's acupoints. Get up and come outside with me. Ning Xuema moved around a bit to lessen the soreness in her limbs. Her wound still painfully burned, and because of that, her body was far from being nimble like usual. Furthermore, the princess was clearly an expert in psychokinesis, and trying to escape under her watchful eyes was wishful thinking. On the contrary, doing so might cause her to experience more suffering. Therefore, Ning Xuema absolutely would not commit such folly. She only thought of delaying a bit. With all her strength, she would delay arriving at the Ministry of Justice to provide time for the Crown Prince to return. If she had known earlier that this would happen, she would not have been against the Crown Prince sharing the same room with her. She slowly got up, slowly put on her shoes and slowly straightened out her clothes. Ji Yunyao became impatient. Why are your movements so slow? Hurry up. In her heart, Ning Xuema somewhat questioned Ji Yunyao's ancestry but, on the outside, she showed a lovable face. Yes, princess. This lowly one received a few wounds and they cause me quite a bit of pain, hence my movements are slowed. Please forgive me. Ji Yunyao knew about the matter of Ning Xuema being lashed and also knew of the the soul-breaking whip's might. Therefore, although she gave a snort, she no longer hurried Ning Xuema. Ning Xuema had already delayed time as much as possible. She had managed to use up a quarter of an hour by tidying herself. In this period of time, she kept an eye out outside through the window. She cursed despairingly in her heart, where did Ji Yunhuang, this bastard, run off to? Why wasn't he back yet? Chapter 57 Forbidden Love, 3, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ji Yunhuang was currently somewhere Ning Xuema would have never expected him to be. The Imperial Palace. He had originally planned to spend the night at Ji Yunxiao's place playing chess. However at midnight, he received an imperial edict from his imperial father, the emperor, summoning him to the palace. The imperial decree cannot be defied. Hence he had no other choice but to bid goodbye to the fifth prince and head for the palace. What he did not know was that just after he had left for a quarter of an hour, one of his shadow guards had rushed over to the fifth prince's residence, to report the news of an official from the Ministry of Justice coming to arrest someone in the crown prince's residence. However, the shadow guard had just missed him. Only when Ji Yunhuang entered the palace did he realize that his imperial father had come down with a fever and was currently lying down on the dragon bed. He wanted Ji Yunhuang to stay at his side. Ji Yunhuang was helpless and could only remain in the palace for the night. He felt that tonight, his imperial father was rather long-winded. He kept asking Ji Yunhuang about his life recently and continued having small talk with him. He could only listen in and chat perfunctorily. For some reason, he felt anxious and wanted to rush back to his residence to check up on the situation. But, he could not do so because his imperial father seemed rather adamant that he accompanied him, prohibiting Ji Yunhuang from leaving. Dot Ning Xuema had already dragged on for as long as she could, but Ji Yunhuang was still nowhere to be seen. Hence, she could only allow herself to be brought out by Ji Yunyao and be handed over to Lord Lu from the Ministry of Justice. Naturally, Ning Xuema inquired about the reason underlying her arrest, 
but Lord Lu barely said anything and was only concise in his reply. Once you reach the Ministry of Justice, you will know why. If you are innocent, then of course, we will let you go. He ordered people to put iron shackles on Ning Shuimo. She knew that based on her current ability, escaping is not an option as it would be useless and might even worsen her situation. She could only grind her teeth as she left with them. What Ning Shuema did not expect was that they did not bring her to the Ministry of Justice's court but directly sent her to the Ministry of Justice's prison. The pathways were long and narrow. The walls were thick and sturdy, made out of dark black stone. The light from the torches weakly illuminated the dark, and a faint fishy odor permeated the area. Furthermore, from the depths of the prison, miserable shrieks and wails echoed into her ears. Every single detail proved to be extremely similar to those ancient Chinese prisons, furthermore, the atmosphere felt even more unsettling. Lord Lu sent men to lock her up in the prison. When she got handed over to a skinny and decrepit man, she understood that these turn of events were definitely not good. Her new jailer, about as tall as Ning Shuama, had a tiny head. However, his face was filled with enough wrinkles to squish a fly between their folds, and from his triangular, drooping eyes, came a sharp blade dot like gaze. He wore a dark red tunic riddled with brown colored splotches that eerily resembled bloodstains. He sat in a wheelchair because of his seemingly disabled legs, while another jailer pushed him around. He looked quite ugly. In addition, he possessed a sinister, dark and bloody aura which surrounding him, making most people shudder in fear. Ning Shuema was handed over by six bailiffs of the Ministry of Justice. The leader of the six went up to exchange a few words with that man in a wheelchair. From their greetings, Ning Shuema overheard that the man's name was Tuidao, truly a name filled with killing intent. The leader of the bailiffs also said something, that Ning Shuema could not hear, to Tuidao, at which Tu Idao slightly nodded his head before turning around to examine her. Ning Shuema felt an indescribable chill akin to a blade passing by, also similar to the feeling of being stared at by a vicious beast. This is not good. Could it be that they were going to punish her without caring about whether or not she was innocent? Are they going to cane her to death? Ning Shuema slowly clenched her hands, causing the iron shackles on her wrists to clank noisily. When the six bailiffs left, Tu Idao once again stared at her for a while with a bloodthirsty look in his eyes before ordering people to drag her into the depths of the prison. One, Tu Idao or, dot, literally means butcher knife. Two, this is a particularly popular corporal punishment which consists of hitting you with stick or cane. The number of hits and what type of stick will be used for punishment depended on the crime. For more details. Chapter 58 Forbidden Love, 4, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Where are you taking me? Ning Shuema refused to budge. Tu Idao smiled, exposing his white teeth. Of course to where you should be. You killed the daughter of Grand Marshal Hu. Don't tell me you had expected to stay in a luxurious room. I didn't kill her. Her death had nothing to do with me. Little miss, you won't be saying the same thing very soon. Take her to the torture chamber. Tui Dao's expression sank as he forcefully ordered with a stern voice. Ning Shuema was brought down with a slightly heavy heart. These people didn't even want to lock her up and investigate first before using torture. They were clearly planning to put her through hell in order to get her to sign a confession for a deed she didn't commit. Just who plotted this wicked scheme to harm her? Currently, she was still wounded. Her fighting ability had not recovered yet. Her movements were still stiff, and her wrists and ankles were still shackled. She was surrounded by sixteen strong large jailers. Seeing their eyes emitting a mirror dot-like radiance, Ning Shuemon knew that their cultivations were not low. To use her current ability to break out was only a pipe dream. She steeled her heart and followed them deeper into the prison. As she walked on the pathway paved with limestones, she saw numerous potholes, causing the floor to be uneven. Under the lamplight, 
these potholes were actually filled with glistening puddles of crimson blood. The further they went, the thicker the stench of blood became and the harder it was to breathe. On either side of the passage, there were rows of cells occupied by prisoners. Those people were scrambling around randomly, holding on to the iron bars of their cells or just lying down on the filthy stone floor. Although their attitudes differed from one another, there was one common point. They all received the cruelest punishments and tortures. Every one of them were all skin and bones with disheveled hair and tattered clothing. They looked more like withered corpses than human beings, presenting a gruesome sight. Their bodies trembled and their throats emitted indistinct unintelligible growling sounds. The sounds were rather faint, but the sheer number of them making the same noise caused amplification to occur, making it sound like the wailings of the dead. Anyone who heard these noises would have formed goosebumps. Little girl, have you seen enough? These are the people who stubbornly refuse to confess and now they are in this miserable state. Tui Dao's voice was hoarse, reminding one of a hissing poisonous snake. It sounded particularly sinister as he spoke while being surrounded by such a sight in this eerie corridor. Ning Shuema lowered her eyes and did not say anything. In her previous life, she had seen the cruelty of the world. During her training as a secret service agent, she had been unlucky and got captured by the enemies. She was then subjected to many tortures methods. Be it drinking chilly water, sitting on the torture dot rack or the electrical chair, she had experienced all of them before. She had also caught enemy agents in the past and had inflicted the aforementioned torture methods on them. However, they were living in a modern society after all, under the constant influences from the media and public opinion. Those torture methods did not include ones used in ancient times. However, from what she saw, it was enough to convince her that this place was definitely like the 18 levels of hell. Even the Qing's top 10 tortures could not compare to this cruelty. These people are mutilated to the point they do not seem human anymore. Such torture would ensure that she would lose a layer of skin and flesh. She retreated back a step. Even if she remained stubborn and proud, if her appearance became that of a monster like those prisoners, would there be any meaning to keep on living? What to do? Just what should she do? Wait for rescue. She knew far too few people in this world. Right now, the only one who really treated her well was the crown prince, but he had disappeared somewhere. He might not be able to rush over here tonight. Even if he could, he might not be able to help her get out of this situation. Dot furthermore, this was obviously a plot against her, a plot that was meant to completely destroy her. The perpetrators had most likely sealed off all the possibilities of someone saving her. Otherwise, Ji Yunhuang would have already arrived earlier. She did not believe that the crown prince would not have heard about the news. He must have been held up by something or someone. Chapter 59 The 18 Levels of Hell You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Tonight, since no one would be able to rescue her, she should just rescue herself. But how was she supposed to escape her doom in this heavily guarded high security prison? Tui Dao's snake. Like gaze landed on Ning Shuemo, and a hint of surprise flashed past his triangular eyes. Many men with indomitable spirits and bones of iron had pissed their pants after seeing the states of the people in the cells. Even if it were those who managed to resist being scared to the point of being unable to control their bodily functions, they would still turn pale and break out in cold sweat. As for Ning Shuemo, she merely pursed her lips a little and lowered her head. There was no emotion discernible on her small face. With an ugly appearance, dwarf dot like stature, a grating voice, and two lame legs, Tui Dao was often suppressed by others. But with his character, he was not content with being suppressed. His vastly different lifestyle had caused his character to become sinister and more perverted than other people. Though his appearance could not compare to the large majority of people, he was immensely skillful with his hands and possessed extremely abnormal methods for interrogation with torture. That, added to his ability of understanding which way the wind is blowing and flattering people, he got swiftly promoted from a small, insignificant jailer, to the head of the prison. 
his road to promotion was paved with the bones of countless souls. His character was cold and his methods were extremely cruel. Regardless of whether the prisoners were innocent or not, all those who ended up in his hands would confess. He had many tricks up his sleeve, each interrogation method was crueler than the others forcing people to confess anything. In the Ministry of Justice's prison, he was called King of Hell Tuesday. So many years in this blood-soaked career caused his character to become more and more twisted. He had a strange hobby. He loved listening to the tried convicts blood-curling screams as they were tortured and looking at their embarrassed faces when they felt scared to the point of pissing in their pants. To him, the sound of the prisoners' miserable shrieks was the most wonderful music to his ears, to his ears the more miserable and wretched, the more soothing it sounded to him. Furthermore, the ones he liked to torment the most were those young and pretty women. Seeing them break down into sobs beneath his torture methods allowed him to feel a sick sense of accomplishment. Noel Daren and Ning Shuema was currently in the claws of such a perverted monster. Would she be able to survive? Kaya. A miserable shriek resounded from the room at the end of the hallway. The voice was a woman's but it was as piercing as a devil's cry. Ning Shuama's body shook, and she lifted her head to look. What she saw caused her pupils to contract. That room was a torture chamber. She finally got to see an actual torture scene, furthermore, it caused Ning Shuama, who was used to seeing shocking scenes, to feel cold. Inside was a variety of torture instruments, and the floor was covered in puddles of blood. The air was saturated with a bloody and foul stench, causing those who smelled it to feel like throwing up. A living and faintly breathing person was nailed to the central wall of the room. This should be a young lady. Her body looked mangled and completely covered in blood. Her mind was already broken while she was being cut up alive. A red dot hot iron bar was inserted in her most sensitive area, causing white clouds of steam to rise with a sizzling sound. The smell of burnt flesh pervaded the air. The reason why Ning Shuema could still tell that she was a young girl despite her body's wretched state was because her face and her slender jade dot like fingers had been left completely intact. That girl was very pretty. Her face did not have the slightest flaw. Her face was intact, but her body, on the other hand, seemed to be on the verge of collapsing. There was blood everywhere and in many places. The jagged edges of broken bones could be seen poking out. This appearance would give those who saw it a huge shock because of the contrast between her perfect face and her mangled body. Ning Shuama's whole body went cold. Tui Dao's snake-like gaze was engrossed watching Ning Shuama's reaction. Seeing that her expression finally changed, he felt an abnormal amount of glee and chuckled. Little girl, you might not recognize her, but she's famous in our Chang Kong country. 1. In numerous religions like Hinduism, Buddhism, hell is considered to be a purgatory where departed souls go to without exception. Karma is an important factor at determined how long a soul stays in hell or for the expiation of their sins. When the souls have paid for all their past sins, in other words, when their karmic debts are paid off, they will be able to leave hell to return to the living world through reincarnation. The concept of the 18 levels of hell steamed from Naraka, but it's not exactly the same Naraka talked in Hinduism or Buddhism. The 18 levels of hell is specific to how Chinese view Naraka or The concept of the Du is strongly influenced by beliefs coming from Taoism. Buddhism and the 18 levels of hell is composed of mazes and chambers where punishments have met. There are the chamber of tongue ripping, chamber of scissors, chamber of iron cycads, chamber of mirror, chamber of steamer, forest of copper columns, mountain of knives, hill of ice, cauldron of boiling oil, chamber of ox, chamber of rock, chamber of pounding, pool of blood, town of suicide, chamber of dismemberment, mountain of flames, Yard of Stone Mill and Chamber of Saw. For more descriptions,